Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we have uh, now uh, the first talk of this session about from Janet Chapman, from Crow2, founder of Crow2Map. Uh, she will present a, a speech called uh, Digital Championship Fighting Gender-Based Violence in Rural Tanzania and with MAPS. I leave the, the floor to you. Thank you very much. And it's great to see some uh, faces here, including a lot of people that have helped in this project. So thank you to all of you. So I'm the chair of Tanzania Development Trust, which is a volunteer-run charity that's been supporting uh, development projects in rural Tanzania since 1975. And so in the context of that, I've spent the last 10 years visiting uh, rural Tanzania and quickly realized that the fact that rural Tanzania, like much of the world, is very poorly mapped, is a huge issue for navigation, for community development, but also to help protect um, girls and women from gender-based violence, including female genital mutilation. So there's been some amazing work in places like Dar es Salaam. I think there's people here um, that have been heavily involved in that, um, but much of rural Tanzania still looks like the picture at the bottom. So uh, nearly seven years ago, I started Crowd to Map, which is a volunteer-run program that's uh, mapping rural Tanzania. So. This is uh, stolen from HOT. Um, we're working towards a Tanzania where everyone is counted and map data is accessible, particularly to people in rural areas, um, and they can engage and contribute to the map um, to map the things that are important to them. Because rural Africa, as many places, needs maps. So we've been doing this. We have over 17,000 online volunteers from all over the world. Um, mapping the base map, but also training people in rural Tanzania, such as the digital champions. So this is um, the stats from the from the remote mappers. So we've added over seven million um, edits now, um, and it's an ongoing project. With anyone anyone with internet connection can get involved. So please um, join us if you're interested. So um, when we first started, as, as we were a volunteer project, um, we were mostly um, using field mappers who had their own mobile phone, and those were typically uh, more educated men, um, because there's still a very big gender divide in rural Tanzania. So very few women in the villages had a smartphone. Very few of them had ever been online. So we were really um, delighted to participate in the Women Connect challenge in January 2019, and thanks to Jeffrey, who was involved at the beginning, um, which involved setting up this network of digital champions to train women who'd never been online before to map their communities and help protect um, their communities from gender-based violence and FGM. So we, worked, we work with local activists. Um, so this is Roby Samwelly. Um, she's an FGM survivor and activist who works in rural Tanzania. Actually, she's just been awarded a human rights award from President Macron for her work. Um, so she does outreach work um, and she runs safe houses for girls refusing FGM. Um, and she's been um, instrumental in this project. So FGM is illegal in Tanzania, but it's still very prevalent, particularly in particular areas as shown on the map. Um, and it happens in particular cutting seasons. So actually one's happening now because they usually coincide with the school holidays. And schools are closed at the moment in Tanzania because of the ongoing census. So what happens is um, that girls in a particular village, the village elders will decide that girls are going to be cut. Um, it's part of a rite of passage to prepare them for um, marriage. And th there, is some, there is a financial benefit to the elders, so they actually get paid, they get some money for this, so it's very underground now. So, we set up a network of digital champions starting in 2019 um, in Serengeti with 87, one in each village. And then we've also rolled it out to two of the surrounding areas, uh, districts. And this is an ongoing project and we're hoping to expand it more when funding allows. So the digital champions were selected by the village 
So uh, the initial training was a training for the whole Women and Children's Protection Committee in the villages. Now, these committees were set up by the government, but really they only existed on paper because there'd never been any funding to train them. So we trained them in mapping, in what was gender-based violence and so on. And then one of the women was selected by the, by the village to be the digital champion. And she was given a very low-end smartphone. It was very interesting to hear Kristen talking about the issues around cheap smartphones because ours were very definitely the bottom of the line. So many, many challenges. So they had some um, training at that point and then ongoing training, mostly via um, WhatsApp. Um, and then also some further um, in-person training when budgets allowed. Um, and also they, there was an SD card that had a lot of um, downloaded content because connectivity is a huge issue and that had things around health and education and so on. So this is the um, ongoing training um, and the in training in person. Thank you to Jeffrey for that photo, I think. And um, people really loved seeing a map of their village for the first time. But one of the other things that they did as well as mapping is that they reported gender-based violence. So they did this using uh, a form on ODK in Swahili. Um, so and they, the incidents that they reported went to social welfare in the district um, and to the um, police um, who dealt with those. And so these, so this is for 439 incidents that they reported and um, this is the type of violence that they were reporting, physical, sexual, emotional and economic. So we also, um, they also um, were involved with a research project with Nottingham University um, around um, some of the risk factors about FGM in those communities um, and also progress towards the sustainable development goals. So they were um, mapping things like health facilities and water supplies, which as you can see in that picture that were challenging. Um, so Digital Champions worked together with youth mappers. So we set up a youth mapper group in the um, local tourism college. Um, so they were also heavily involved in this research, which is ongoing. Another thing they were involved in is um, we're working with Plant Village, which is an amazing project using artificial intelligence to detect pests in maize and cassava, which are the staple crops. And FGM is also a, an economic factor because when girls are married, the parents get money um, as a bride price. So when, when, um, par when parents are very particularly poor, they're more likely to um, have their girls cut. So, and having um, maize and cassava that is uh, infected with the diseases that are really prevalent, can reduce the yield by up to 90%. So um, trying to raise the economic um, aspects in the villages is also very important in the fight against FGM. So typically in the cutting season, um, the, the FGM activists and the gender-based, um, um, the gender desk in the police, they will get a phone call in the middle of the night saying there are girls about to be cut in Kabancha Bancha village. Um, before we started, that village was not on any map. You know, there's no road signs, there's no street lights. It's very difficult to find girls quickly. So we trained the activists and the police to use downloaded maps on their phones to find um, the villages and the safe places in the villages quickly, particularly at night so that they could get there in time to rescue girls. So we were using maps.me, now we're using organic maps, but it works offline and to route to an exact place. But it's very difficult for field mappers like the digital champions to add their local knowledge about where the church is, where the school is, et cetera, without a good base map. Um, Kristen mentioned yesterday about sometimes um, the, you know, it, the phones are fairly inaccurate, so you have to 
um, align yourself looking at the base map. So we have been creating base maps of those areas um, using the humanity uh, hot open the hot tasking manager um, to add roads and buildings um, like this. Um, so we're setting up um, we've set up many different tasks and thank you to anyone everyone here who's helped contribute. Um, but we've also um, added uh, um, open data. So, for example, um, clinic locations, school locations, and so on. Um, we took those and just put them into OpenStream app manually. Um, but then also we've been training people, um, people that do have access to laptops in a, and know the area as well, to add their local knowledge directly in using OpenStreetMap, usually ID, but sometimes JOSM. Um, so also, um, there was also an open government data about um, water point locations, um, but that's very difficult to actually be able to see them on the map. But we did use that data to try and work out where the missing villages are. Because if you have um, information about um, the names of the water points, then you can um, work out from that the name of the village and see which ones were missing. And if people are interested in the methodology, then um, ask, ask me. So uh, as this is an ongoing volunteer project, we've tried really hard to keep people interested over the last seven years. So we've had, uh, we have a Slack channel for remote mappers um, where people can get feedback on their first mapping attempts because we've had a lot of people that were new to um, OSM. And if you'd like to join, please let me know. And we've also, we, we've developed training materials, but also um, quizzes. So the, the quizzes were around, you know, how to how to map, particularly for buildings and for, for highways. And then, so you had to do a um, a quiz, and then if you got 100%, you got a badge. Um, also, we try to um, motivate people by having the report cards. So this is for all of the, you know, everyone involved, like how how we've done this week or how we've done this month to keep people interested. Uh, we've had a lot of help from many different people. So this is from Highgate about how um, this is very new data about um, how current the um, map is. So this is something that we want to work on going forwards. Um, so for the for the field mappers, um, and we have WhatsApp groups. We have one for the digital champions, and then we also have an ongoing training. Um, so we've, um, we've developed a lot of training materials, mostly in Swahili, and um, those are there. We've also um, worked really hard to set up um, and work with youth mapper chapters in Tanzania. So they've been um, a fantastic allies, um, and we're really keen to develop that more. So working with, uh, particularly with Eric and Raya, who are both here, wave. Um, <laughs> so we have uh, monthly uh, webinars to try and build up good practice and share good practice within the Tanzanian community. But anyone who's interested, um, please come along. Our next one's next Saturday. Um, we've been part of Everywhere She Maps, um, a, a, another fantastic youth mapper project. And last year we had a first um, intake of interns through that, which was amazing. And we really hope to repeat that again soon. So there's a big difference between our different groups of mappers. So generally the remote mappers are pretty highly educated and they've used maps all of their life and they have access and can use a large range of technology. Whereas the digital champions, most of them never went to secondary school. Um, some of them didn't even um, finish primary. They'd never seen a map of their local area before and they hadn't used a smartphone or, or ever been online. So a, a big issue. And there are additional challenges for female rural mappers. Um, so 
it's quite a patriarchal society, so they, you know, men often tell them that they shouldn't be out doing this, um, and it can be um, physically dangerous, um, as some of the youth youth mappers in Latin America were talking um, yesterday. Um, but they're very committed because they do believe that educating people about maps and using maps to protect themselves is important. Um, and that they really are committed to helping women in their communities and helping progress towards the SDGs. So I do feel that the mapping community um, should recognise the additional challenges faced particularly by um, rural women like this. Um, and um, there are additional funding needs. So one of the issues around um, FGM is that it's, it's a tribal issue and the particular sub-tribes or clans can cut the girls at different times. So one of the things that we've done is built, look at local knowledge um, about what, and map the prevalence of different clans, um, as you can see on this map. So the activists and the police uh, estimate that this project has helped save 3,000 girls from being cut. And every year when, when girls are cut, some of them will bleed to death and die. And when that happens, their bodies are thrown in the bush and you're never allowed to talk of them again. So this is um, a, still a huge issue. So we've learned many lessons um, going along. Um, it, Working with um, marginalised rural communities is extremely hard. Um, there are multiple challenges around uh, funding, about connectivity, um, et cetera, et cetera. But the training opportunities are really appreciated by women like our digital champions because they generally do not get many. Um, they have a lot of additional challenges, but they're very committed. Um, building relationships is really key. Um, so you really have to have the trust of the community. And really, I think you have to be there, prepared to be there for the long term, because it takes time. Um, but we do believe that giving rural African women the digital tools to map, educate and protect their sisters is an extremely cost effective long term solution to empower women in isolated um, rural communities and make our community more inclusive. So if you'd like to get involved, please do so. It's, an, it's a volunteer project. Um, we really uh, welcome help, um, advice from anyone in the community. So, and thank you to everyone who's helped us so far. Thank you so much, Janet. I remind you that if you have any question, you can do it via Venulas. I see that now there are no, no yet questions, so I have a question for you. Uh, I like very much the idea to having also training material in new different channels that maybe we are not thinking about them, because maybe you are thinking to have to organize video. We saw the presentation about UN mappers, about the to creating a Moodle. So it's really, I believe, challenging to create training material via, uh, say, I should say, with, via not normal, common uh, way. What can you say about that? It's could be hard, it's hard, it's uh, how it could be done, it's more it's easy to understand from the people, it's, it's so hard and they need a lot of time to, to prepare the material and to have the material to be used. Um, yes, I mean, it's extremely difficult to do online training for people who are new to being online. I mean, it, it, it doesn't really work that well. You do need to have some, you know, face-to-face. So, uh, and then you, I think you need a lot of follow-ups. So um, you do need to keep going back to the digital champions and, and, and working out, you know, what's the, there will generally be some issue with their phone. And I don't, so it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's difficult and you need to, um, start where they're at, you need to be um, using the languages that, they, that they're that they using. I mean, so obviously none of, none of the materials that we are um, working with the digital champions are in English. Um, some of them are in, in Swahili and some of them are in, you know, local languages. And you, so you need to have someone um, in the community that understands the issues and understands that, um, okay, well, 
you know, this person is having a particular issue because their son is actually taking the phone or, you know. So you need to really have people in the community that understand the community challenges and start from there, I think. Thank you. So we have the first question. How long did it take you to train women and make the project sustainable? What challenge have you incurred in introducing open mapping and test tool to detect tool to them? So what was the challenges with? Uh, yeah, which are the challenges that you are facing uh, with the introduction of, of to open mapping, but I believe mainly to mapping uh, because I believe that. Um, so, so there was many challenges um, in that if people generally had never seen a map of their area, then you have to start with, you know, actually drawing a map of the of the village where the where the main points are, talking about, you know, how you might um, use maps and how they could be useful. I mean, and generally when I started showing people uh, my maps on my phone, they thought it was some magic. <laughs> so um, <laughs> So, but there were huge challenges. There's challenges with keeping the phones charged. Um, trying to set up the phones was a nightmare because of the, the connectivity was so bad. And they had to then put the phones out outside to try and, you know, link to the satellites. And then they started frying in the sun and, oh, I don't know, and then some goats came past or, you know, there were there was so many challenges. Um, but, you know, you get there in the end and and people really appreciate it so it feels worth it yeah i believe that sure for, for sure we feel uh, it's worth is worth it and also there was a previous question that's how many time it takes to train uh, to make the project uh, sustainable maybe someone is missing let's say the introduction part to how long it takes to arrive to how many years there is the project okay so um so we started the Digital Champions project in January 2019, and it's ongoing. But in, I mean, in terms of making it sustainable, I mean, financially sustainable is a huge issue. So we had um, initial we had some initial funding from um, HOT by, by the Women Connect project, and then we've had little bits of money since since then. But really. I mean, crowd to map is is just dependent on individual donors, so it's very difficult. Um, so the major challenge is fi financial, finding money to pay for data, for example, or if you want to do another training session, bringing the the women in from the villages. Obviously, there's a cost for that. So it would have been much more successful with more money to have more training. Um, so. So there is a, a question about the if do you have a security concern with women mapping on the ground uh, because they expose their local uh, the location every time they contribute to the map? Um, yes, I think there are security concerns, particularly for the FGM activists, um, and certainly when they first started, it was extremely dangerous. Um, I think be, being an being an activist for women's rights is often very dangerous if you put your head above the parapet. Um, so Roby certainly had death threats, um, um, but we're working really closely with the um, village leaders um, and the and the, the the government, and so um, they are protected to to some extent. And things have changed. So since we started the project, uh, there the Police have really changed their attitude. So to begin with, they were very anti roby and they were really unhelpful. But then the next year, the, the girls had a march demanding their rights around town and the, the um, police were the stewards and they supported it. And then the year after that, the police started arresting cutters. So it's really changed. So it's much safer now because of the effect of people like Roby that really were fearlessly standing up for her rights. Okay, we have one live question, last last question. I may have missed this if you covered it right at the start, but um, is literacy levels a problem? And if necessary, is it possible to train people to map without reading, just um, entirely through symbols? on editors and so on. 
Um, literacy is an issue, and it would be good um, to have tools that, that you know that didn't need um, that, but we didn't have access to that. So if if somebody had produced them, I think that would be would be potentially useful. So thank you so much again, Janet. Thank you.